someone was asking me about tulips. This is a tulip that I planted out here from one of my pots. Uh, it could be like five, six, seven years ago, and it's naturalized. So it doesn't bloom early like all the others, but it's naturalized to the point. You can see it's very healthy leaves. It will be blooming in the next week or so. You can see there's blue bells here, or white bells, blue bells. And there's a jack in the pulpit with a slug. And if I go over here, these are tulips that I planted out uh, two, three years ago. So you can see they're naturalizing. They're still earlier than the one that's completely naturalized. But these are all from pots and I plant them out and they will last hopefully for years to come. And I just let them do their thing. So some of them will come back again and again and some of them won't. You can see the daffodils were over, are over and the cherry blossoms are just about over. And there's cowslips. Here's some cowslips. There's some cowslips and a dandelion closed because it's raining. Then another tulip there. So these are, what I've been doing is this area here, I've been planting out snowdrops. Uh, the daffodils were there, have been there for, since my grandparents' time. I've been planting out the tulips and planting out or sowing cowslip seeds. The bluebells have naturalized themselves. So, but I'm also allowing, you know, the dandelions to do their thing, the vetches. See, there's the vetch. See, right there, that's one dandelion leaf, and that's a different variety of dandelion leaf, and that's a third variety of dandelion leaf. So the cherries are pretty much over. The rain has battered their petals. So hopefully a lot of these will bear fruit because it was such an incredible blossoming year. This is all St. John's wort all through here. When I came home, this was a tiny patch that was probably two to three foot square. And now it covers a huge area. All that is uh, because I would weed out the uh, scutch grasses and things to allow the St. John's wort to do its thing. This blooms later on in the year. Bear, what are you doing? Is there a vole in there or shrew? There must be something interesting. So that's, and here's the cow parsley, is all coming up. So it's just always planting, always tending, always weeding out what you don't want. And it looks naturalized, but I'm helping it along because biodiversity is giving food to animals all year long, wildlife, not just an intense time at one specific time of the year like in spring, but you always want to keep regenerating. There's a dog rose. That's a dog rose there. That's a holly next to a crab apple. This is a rowan tree and the rowan is about to bloom. Look at the, uh, there's the rowan about to bloom. And you can see the bluebells are all through the grasses. The nettles, when they're flowering, they're full of pollinators. So biodiversity is not about including food for one intense time of year, but is to keep it diversified. Here you can see this, I love this time of year right here. The cow parsley is just so beautiful as it waves under this huge ash tree. So these rowans and hollies that are here and crab apples, this whole length of trees all the way down along here, I planted when I came back here to Ireland. So those rowans are about 14 years old, I think. Could be more or less, could be more. But biodiversity is continually planting and regenerating and not allowing anything to take over as a monoculture. 
So that's what biodiversity is about, is the biodiversity of seasonal food for all animal life and to not allow anything to take over as a monoculture to only feed one aspect. When I came home, the place was polluted with ivy and nothing but ivy, which would only feed wildlife twice a year, when it buried and when it flowered. So now I'm feeding wildlife throughout the year with all the different berries, apples, rowans, pollens, cherries, etc. So you can see I leave some of the ivy in there. There's a bit of ivy right there. That's an old stump of an old lime tree that fell. Not a lime tree, what was it? It might be a horse chestnut tree. But that's what biodiversity is about and that's what I farm and work towards. So if any of you are enjoying my videos, please do follow me on Patreon and contribute. It's just a mug of coffee once a month that you can direct debit and you can see what I'm doing with all my videos. I'm always posting videos to try and show what I'm doing so you know what I'm doing is what you believe in, hopefully. And there's a beautiful cow parsley.